When it comes to the Tudors, the image of Henry VIII, familiar to us from many portraits, films and TV series, immediately comes to our mind. Henry VII, the founder of the dynasty, is much less known. But that's not so bad when we are studying history. Let's try to form our own opinion about this historical figure, let's evaluate him by the appearance depicted in the portraits, by the memoirs of contemporaries and the descriptions of historians. Let's not forget that any portrait, any assessment of a historical figure carries a certain bias. So Henry VII, Duke of Richmond, became King of England on August 22, 1485, when he was 28 years of age. This is how Henry VII looked in his youth. And here is a terracotta sculpture by the Italian sculptor of the Florentine school, Pietro Torrigiano, who designed the tomb of Henry VII in Westminster Abbey. The Italian historian Polydor Virgil, in his book, History of England, begun at the initiative of King Henry VII himself, but completed after his death, left the following description of Henry. His body was slender, but well-built and strong, his height above the average. His appearance was remarkably attractive and his face was cheerful, especially when speaking, his eyes were small and blue, his teeth few, poor and blackish, his hair was thin and white, his complexion sallow. His spirit was distinguished, wise and prudent, his mind was brave and resolute, and never, even at moments of greatest danger, deserted him. He had a most pertinacious memory. Withal, he was not devoid of scholarship. In government, he was shrewd and prudent, so that no one dared to get the better of him through deceit or guile. He was gracious and kind and was as attentive to his visitors as he was easy to access. His hospitality was splendidly generous, he was fond of having foreigners at his court. But those of his subjects who were generous only with promises he treated with harsh severity. He was most fortunate in war, although he was more inclined to peace, he cherished justice above all things. He was the most ardent supporter of our faith, and daily participated with great piety in religious services. But all these virtues were obscured lately by avarice. In a monarch indeed it may be considered the worst vice, since it is harmful to everyone. In the National Portrait Gallery of London there is a portrait of Henry VII by an unknown artist, which belongs to the last years of the king's life. The portrait is dated 1505, when Henry was 48 years old. He died four years later. This impressive portrait is the earliest painting in the collection of the National Portrait Gallery. The inscription states that the portrait was painted on October 29, 1505, by the order of Hermann Rink, an agent of the Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I. The portrait was probably painted as part of an unsuccessful marriage proposal, as Henry hoped to marry Maximilian's daughter Margaret of Savoy. But let's return back to the beginning of this story. How did an unknown baby born two months after the death of his father, Edmund Tudor, 1st Earl of Richmond, who died in York captivity from the bubonic plague, manage to obtain the English crown by defeating Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field in 1485? And how does this relate to the War of the Scarlet and White Rose? Read our next post. But first, try to answer the following short quiz, 